Microsoft released the SharePoint framework known as SPFX version 1.20 on September the 26th, 2024. This was the second SharePoint framework released this year, and like the previous one, one version 1.19, it's small and it only focuses on adaptive card extensions, otherwise known as ACEs. This has been one of the quietest years of the SharePoint framework releases, tying the COVID-19 year while on the heels of the most active year last year since the initial release. Now, as SharePoint framework developers are familiar, Microsoft hasn't updated the major version of the SharePoint framework since its initial release in 2017. They only update the minor and the patch version numbers. And as you can see from this chart, this has been an unusually quiet year. It hasn't been this quiet since the COVID-19 year. What, are we in another pandemic? Well, maybe in tech, the AI pandemic. Okay, let's not digress too much and let's get down to business. As I said, this is yet another ACE-focused release that features on two things, one fix and a handful of changes. Things like a new ACE data visualization chart options, support for HTML in addition to adaptive cards for ACE quick views, fixing that nasty Webpack object object error that it was introduced in SPFX 1.19, a bunch of DevTool package version updates, various ES Lint updates, one related SDK version update, one code change to all the new React projects, and one code change to all the new React projects. Now, unlike previous SPFX release unboxing installments, I'm gonna get more detailed this time. I'm gonna go a lot deeper than just my normal unboxing series. Now, while not part of this release, I've also got a little gripe with this release that I'm gonna share at the end. So stick around if you wanna see that. Hi, I'm Andrew, and I'm a 20 plus year veteran of Microsoft's productivity ecosystem, predating Microsoft 365. And I focus on topics for full stack developers just like you. Now, if this topic interests you, check out my free newsletter where I talk about the same kind of topics and I share the most important news and relevant news in the Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Azure space for full stack developers, and it's delivered straight to your inbox for free. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Let's begin with what's new in this release. Now in the previous release, SPFX version 1.19, Microsoft introduced a new ACE template type, the data visualization card. The data visualization card template enables the creation of simple charting solutions within our adaptive card extensions. Now, at this time, we were limited to just the simple line charts like you see here. Now in this release of SPFX 1.20, Microsoft added three new chart types, a bar chart, a donut chart, and a pie chart, and all of those you can see here. Let's see what the code looks like for these new chart types. Now to implement the bar chart, I'm gonna set the visualization kind property on the card's body object to bar, and I'm gonna add my own series of data to display uh, inside of the chart. You can see here that the series is an array of data points or I data points that just have an X and a Y coordinate that I wanna use. And then they also have a name associated with them as well. Now the pie and the donut charts, they have a similar configuration with the only difference being the property is donut that's gonna be on the card's body. So here you can see from this code, I've got the data visualization kind is set to pie. And then I've got the is donut property set to false with a series of data. If I wanted this to use a donut chart instead of a pie chart, I would set the is donut to equal to true. Now the next new thing is an HTML based ACE quick view. Up to now, developers have used adaptive cards exclusively to implement the quick view in an ACE. In this SharePoint framework release, Microsoft is introducing a brand new option, HTML. Now this works just like a web part in that you're gonna implement a render method on your quick view and you're gonna set the value of the this.dom.element.innerHTML property equal to whatever HTML you wanna show in your quick view. This also means that you could even inject a little React application in your ACES quick view. That's pretty cool. Okay, that covers what's new. Let's talk about what's fixed. In the SharePoint Framework 1.19 release, Microsoft bumped the version of Webpack to version five, but the way Microsoft was using Webpack unfortunately impacted when we had exceptions in our code. Instead, all developers would see when they had an exception was something like you see here. You just got this reference to object object. Now that wasn't terribly helpful, especially when we used to get errors that looked a little bit more like this. This issue was well documented in the issue list in the SharePoint slash sp-dev-docs slash issues, issue number 9834. Now, thankfully Microsoft fixed this for all new projects created with the SharePoint framework version 1.20. But if you're not ready to upgrade your SharePoint framework project from version 1.19 to 1.20, you can manually fix those projects just to get those errors to show up again. So to fix your SharePoint framework version 1.19 project, you can do the following. First, 
you're gonna update all the SPFX related tool packages to version 1.20.2. So if you see any of the following packages in your project's package.json file, those should now be set to version 1.20.2. This includes all of the following Microsoft scoped packages. ESLint config SPFX, ESLint plugin SPFX, SP build web, SP module interfaces, and SPFX web build rig. Now, again, you don't add all of these to all of your projects. It's just if you already are using one of these in your project, because some are used in web part projects and some are used in um, extension projects and et cetera, you only wanna update what's already there. You don't wanna add anything new. Uh, the second step is you wanna upgrade the package uh, rush stack slash eslint dash config. You wanna update that from version 2.5.1 to version 4.0.1. Now, if you update any of these packages using NPM and then installing them uh, one by one or all at once from the command line, you're gonna be just fine. But if you elect to manually update the package.json file, make sure you delete the package-lock.json file and the node modules folder before you run NPM install to re-download all of the new packages. Next up, let's look at the things that changed in this release. Now, none of these made the official release notes and some of these are very minor. So first, let's talk about the Teams JS SDK that was updated. The SharePoint Framework API includes nested copies of the Microsoft Graph and the Microsoft Teams JavaScript SDKs within them. Now, I personally would rather Microsoft not include them in the SharePoint uh, Framework API because now I'm somewhat forced to wait for another SharePoint Framework release whenever they are gonna get updated, but I'd rather import them when I need them, but I digress. In this SharePoint Framework version 1.20 release, Microsoft bumped the version of the Teams JavaScript SDK for version 2.12.0 to 2.24.0. That's about three months behind the current version, which is 2.28.0 at the time of the SharePoint Framework release. So that means SPFX developers who build web parts to be used in Teams tabs, they're gonna be missing out on the following releases. The Teams JavaScript SDK 2.25.0, 2.26.0 and 2.28.0. Now, these three different updates, they included three different bug fixes and a bunch of updates and some new things that were added to the SDK. But what about the Microsoft Graph JavaScript SDK? I'm gonna address that when I cover the current supported versions a little bit later in this episode. Now let's talk about some ESLint changes about like some updates and some redefined rules. Microsoft made three changes to how ESLint is used in SharePoint Framework projects in this 1.20 release. There's nothing for you to do here. All of these are done automatically for you in a project. So first, they upgrade the version of ESLint in all projects from version 8.7 to 8.57.0. It's a pretty big bump. They secondly updated the version of the ESLint config that's defined in the package at rushstack slash ESLint dash config from version 2.25.1 to 4.0.1. And then they also removed all these uppercase types from the list of banned types in the default uh, .eslintrc.js configuration file. So before, if I had like a property that was gonna be Boolean, I used to be able to only use a lowercase Boolean as the name of the type. I couldn't use an uppercase B as part of the type. Uh, now by removing that rule, I, don't, I can choose whichever one I choose to use. It doesn't really matter. Now let me talk about some React changes to our existing templates. It appears that Microsoft made a global change or a fix to all of the project templates in the SharePoint Framework 1.20 release that utilize React. Now that includes the web part, the form customizer extension, and the field customizer extension, but only when I'm using React as a web framework in those three different scenarios. Now previously, the class defined in these different uh, templates, they've returned a react.component uh, type of an object with two parameters. The first parameter was the public signature of the component's properties, and the second was the component state. The component's public property uh, interface was always there. But in the SharePoint Framework version 1.20 version, they got rid of that generic object that was used to express the state. The other change, or fix, was to the form customizer and field customizer templates. And they updated them to be more in line with what we see in the web part uh, React template. Um, now, the render method is gonna return an, uh, an element um, that's not just a generic React element object, but one that's gonna return the interface that defines the public signature of the component. So we'll have like a React element with the angle brackets of the something like iHelloWorldProps uh, coming right after it. 
Now, unfortunately, these templates are still using React class components, not the modern way of working with React using functional components uh, via React hooks. Boo. All right, let's talk about some supported version dependencies. One thing that every SharePoint framework developer wants to know is the answer to a simple question when they get a new version of the SharePoint framework. What versions of all the dependencies work with this SharePoint framework version? Well, in this installment, I've got you covered. Let's start with the production dependencies. These are dependencies that are potentially used by your projects when you deploy them to production. I say potentially because you might not be using React or Fluent UI React components in your project. The first is React version 17.0.1. Unfortunately, that one's about four years behind the latest published, which is React version 18. Uh, it might actually be version 19 as we're deep in the uh, release candidates by the time you see this video. The second one is the Fluent UI React components, which is uh, version 8.106.4. That's about a year and a half behind the latest published uh, version 8.120.9 release. The Microsoft Graph JavaScript SDK, which is version 3.0.2, that's about two and a half years behind the latest published uh, released version, which is 3.0.7. And as I've talked about earlier, the Microsoft Teams JavaScript SDK, which is version 2.24.0, which is just about three months behind the latest published release of version 2.28.0. All right, now let's look at the development dependencies and tools. These are dependencies that you'll use in some of your uh, developer experiences. Some you are gonna install in your workstation, things like Node, Yeoman, and the Gulp CLI. And some are installed as part of each project's listed dependencies like TypeScript and Webpack. Node.js version 18, that's the only version of Node.js that's supported with this release. For TypeScript, it's version 4.7.4. .4. That's about two years behind the latest published uh, version of TypeScript as uh, the time of this recording. Uh, Yeoman is version five. The Gulp CLI is version three, and Webpack is version 5.88.1. Again, these are all the versions that the current version of the SharePoint framework is using. Okay, now new in this installment, I've got some parting thoughts, or maybe they're just rants. I really need some space here just to vent for a little bit. First, I fully appreciate that the SharePoint framework focus is defined by product goals and planning from other teams. So the fact that someone in Redmond at Microsoft is pushing Viva Connections so hard is gonna influence the fact that every release for the last two years, for the most part, has really just invested only in ACES for Viva Connections. But this platform and tooling is long in the tooth and it's acquired a significant amount of technical debt. And while it isn't springtime in the Northern Hemisphere just yet, I sure hope that we can start to influence the team to take stock of the developer experience and start to address some long-standing bugs and technical debt that's built up over time. So in the spirit of cleaning up some technical debt, I wanna focus on three things. Publish or cut features that are stuck in a perpetual beta or developer preview. There are three features or APIs that have been sitting in beta for over two years. One goes back to the initial release of the SharePoint framework in February of 2017. That's over seven years ago. The SharePoint framework version 1.14 release in February of 2022 introduced two features for ACES. The first is ACE card caching. For improved performance, the SharePoint framework supports local caching of your adaptive card extensions card views. The cached card view will immediately re be rendered when you're loading your ACE. After the ACE loads, it can optionally update the card view. The cache can then be configured to store the latest rendered card as well as the state of the ACE. That's gonna give you a lot of performance benefits client side. The second is ACE action error handlers. Now Microsoft, is, they added an event uh, that developers can handle when an error occurs within an ACE's action. You simply override the base view on action error method to handle your different errors. Now, it's been two and a half years since these features were released in Dev Preview, and they are still in Dev Preview. The next feature or API that's been sitting in a perpetual beta state is the SPHP Client Batch API. What is this? Well, let's say you need to do a series of API calls to the SharePoint REST API. Normally, that involves multiple round trips to do to the server. But a more optimal way of doing this would be to create a batch request. Now, I've written on my blog how to create and process a batch request with the SharePoint REST API, and I'll include a link to it in the description below the video. It's a complicated manual process, but it is a nice optimization for your app. Well, the point of the SPHP Client Batch API is that it simplifies the process of creating and processing the batch. And it was part of the original SharePoint Framework release version one 
back in February 2017, but it's been in beta since then for seven and a half years. Over the years, Microsoft has dropped a comment here and there that this API has issues and that they need to address these issues with it, but nothing ever comes of those discussions. Still, it's been seven and a half years. Gmail was widely seen as having the longest beta, and that was only five years long. If there's an issue with this API, then cut it. Otherwise, GA it. There's this is to make it generally available. Let's move on. Let's either cut it or move on. My take is that customers aren't likely to use features, especially when they sit in preview for this long. A protracted beta phase is counterproductive. Microsoft needs to either cut these features or promote them to generally available as a supported feature. My second gripe, React is so old. Upgrade it. The only version of React that the SharePoint framework supports is version 17, and that was released nearly four years ago in October of 2020. Since then, the React team has shipped version 18. That happened a year and a half ago in March of 2023, and we're staring down the imminent release of React version 19 any day now. It could even be released by the time you see this video. The last time that the SharePoint Framework team updated the version of React was in version it was in the SharePoint Framework version 1.16. That was back in November of 2022, almost two years ago. In blocking developers from using recent versions of React, Microsoft is making it so much harder to use popular libraries for UI components or gri data grids and build dev and uh, developer tools like testing and mocking libraries. But being so dated, it also hurts the adoption and the impression new developers to the SharePoint framework have with the framework. <laughs> Imagine walking into a car dealership and realizing that none of the cars on the showroom floor support Bluetooth or have USB ports in the front seat. And instead they tell you, you gotta put your CDs in a cartridge in the trunk. That's exactly how this feels. Meanwhile, I'm working with the latest version of React 19 release candidates in my Microsoft Teams apps because there's no such limitation that I can use whatever I want. Even if Microsoft is committed to the SharePoint framework long-term, which I honestly think that they are, this simple fact doesn't communicate that to the customers and to the developer community. Microsoft needs to update the supported version of, Re of React to version 18 or ideally version 19 in the SharePoint framework, and they need to do it as soon as possible. <laughs> but wait a minute, speaking of dated, TypeScript is old. Upgrade that too. The latest version of the SharePoint framework only supports TypeScript version 4.7.4. .4. Now that was released just over two years ago in June of 2022. The latest major version of TypeScript is version five. That was released one and a half years ago in March of 2023. And it's already been progressing all the way up to version 5.6. Now back in SharePoint framework version 1.8 that was released back in March of 2019, about five and a half years ago, Microsoft gave us a way to decouple the version of TypeScript from the version of, of the SharePoint framework using something called the Rush Stat Compiler, otherwise known as the RSC. Now using supported versions of the RSC, developers can modify their SharePoint framework projects to use different versions of TypeScript. You can even read more about, about RSC and how to do this from an article that I've written that I'll link in the show notes called Using Different Versions of TypeScript in SPFX Projects. Now the Rush Stack team, the ones that created the RSC, they created a version for TypeScript version 5.3, but that's only been a, there's only been a single release of it, 0 0.1, and it hasn't been touched in six months, and it isn't even listed on their site. So are we even allowed to use this? Will this even work? Should we even trust it? You might ask yourself, what's the issue with using a newer version of TypeScript? Okay, fair point. Other than the obvious desire to use new language features and performance optimizations in TypeScript 5, like an old version of React, this complicates using modern libraries. Just figuring out the testing story of what dependencies and the specific versions of each one of those dependencies that you need for the developer tools is already complicated enough. Then to realize that you've got to time travel back two years to when COVID was still going on, that makes it even harder. I'm gonna repeat what I just said a minute ago about React. Even if Microsoft is committed to the SharePoint framework long-term, and again, I genuinely think that they are, this simple fact does not communicate that to customers and the developer community. Microsoft needs to update the supported version of TypeScript to version five, and they need to do it as soon as possible. Okay, that's a wrap. This was a much bigger update than I normally do with these new releases and unboxing videos. Would, did you find this helpful? If so, would you drop a comment below and share what your favorite part is or how it helps you? 
This tells me if it's worth my time to keep doing these in the future. Thank you so much for watching or listening. All the links and resources that I mentioned this episode are linked in the video description or the show notes, depending on if you're watching or listening to this episode. If you're listening to this on a podcast platform, please leave a review in the Apple Podcast app as it helps other people discover it. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, please give me a thumbs up to help others discover the channel just like you. And what do you think about the latest version and the latest release of the SharePoint framework? Do you have a question, a comment, or any insights about it? Drop a comment below the video. And do hit that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed to the channel. So you'll see when I publish more videos for full stack developers on the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.